match, so it's all going on. Albion Ocean. He's having a good day. He started on day one. He's still here battling it out as the players decide who breaks. I'm delighted to be joined in the com box with Group One winner Chris, the shopmaker Melon. Cheers, Carlos. Looking forward to another fantastic match. And as you say, we're into day five, and there's only three more chances for people to get through to the final stages. What have you been up to, pal, anyway? You've been a bit quiet. Yeah, not been doing much. Food. Just had a, a little something to eat for, for dinner. Colonel, Burger King? No, cut down on them, pal. Just uh, a little chicken fajita. Very nice indeed. Albin Ocean gets the first rack underway. Cue ball's close to the side. But it stays up, Chris. Was that cold? Yeah, the side spin kind of kept that up. If it, if it had the other spin on it, it would have spun into the pocket. But going to have to play a push out. And whatever he does, he's putting himself second favourite for the rack. It has been, well, it's been an eventful day. We have had six Hill Hill matches on the spin on table one today. Wow. I wonder what odds you'd get on that. Please for Christina to catch to finally get her first point of the day. She's been a little bit unlucky today. She's played some good stuff. She's lost two Hill Hills and she's finally won one. So she's got one more game to play. That will be against Billy Thorpe. She will be the last match of the evening on table one. Yeah, and I believe she beat Billy yesterday. So she may need to beat him again to survive for tomorrow's group but this should be a fantastic match between Roberto Gomez former world finalist and Albin Ocean a former world champion does it get any better tried the cross bank there cue ball got in the way so it didn't go in they see the Superman logo on his shirt nickname Superman Yeah, it comes from a country full of talented pool players. None more so than the great Efren Reyes, Francisco Bustamante, Ronnie Alcano, Denis Ocolo, Carlo Biado. The list is endless. I remember going to the Philippines many years ago, and even the cleaner could break and run against you. I think he's overspun this ball. Very difficult shot what he attempted. It was a good effort. Yeah, he has got a chance of cross banking this. Not an easy shot. He's looking at the cut into the top pocket. He is. I'm not sure he can control the cue ball. The, the cue ball's going to fly across the table. And you should be careful that he doesn't come back and hit his cue if he is playing this at pace. Well, he misses the two ball but doesn't leave anything easy for Albin. Well, what does he do here, Carl? Well, I suggest hitting the two ball, Chris. Well, 
Well, it's virtually in the same place where Alvin just played it from. Probably see Roberto have a go at this one. Well, he's played the safety and he's played it well. And he's not left a side rail kick from the left. Maybe it'll get it from the right, but he's going for his jump cue. Both of these players have played four matches, won four, so they have qualified for the semi-finals. Seven players in a group. The top four qualify to make the semi-finals where there will be one winner and they will play in the final group next Monday. My co-commentator is already there. He won on day one. And whoever finishes last is out of the tournament. So Key Chris is not to finish last. Yeah, and I feel Roberto might be missing a little trick here on the two ball. Wasn't sure that the four went, and for me there, he should have potted the two, nudged into the four and five. The four would have gone towards the pocket, and he would still have had a shot at the three ball. He's a fantastic player, is Roberto. He's never won a major that I know of. But he's been there and thereabouts. Very difficult player to beat. Well, Albin's just left a slight angle. Probably going to top this three ball in with top right and spin. Needs to be a little bit careful. There you see the right hand spin taking effect, bringing the cue ball a little bit more to the left to make this four ball an easier pot. And rack one all falls on this shot right here. Well, he smashed it in, and I don't know why. And now he's in deep trouble. Yeah, misjudgment of the cue ball there from Albin. Tried to go three rails back out into the middle. Now he's kicking. Got to be careful. If you go two rails with pace, the scratch is on. They eat it full. Has he made it. What a shot. What a shot there from Albin Ocean. It had a chance and he played it at a decent pace, knowing the four, five ball would have gone to the bottom rail should he have missed it. He should make this. Going to spin it with a touch of left hand spin. Needs to be careful again. And that's why there's no reason to hit that so hard. As long as you left the cue ball anywhere around the centre of the table there, he had a shot at the eight ball. And the harder you play that shot, the less chance the pocket has of accepting it. Roberto's going to have to spin this seven in because the natural angle is going somewhere near enough in the side pocket. And that's a good shot right there, and he's perfect on the eight ball. Just noticed on Roberto's glove, he's got Superman and the logo. So at some point, I'm sure we'll get a little close-up. Yeah, I'm not sure what all that's about. He well, his nickname's Superman. I read the comments from the first record. 
Well, rack one goes to Roberto Gomez, playing the nine ball behind his back. Naoki on table two. He's got a good chance to get on the hill. Forty two years of age, Roberto from the Philippines, spends most of his time in the USA now. Still a very dangerous pool player. Let's have a little look at table two. There's Nuki Oi, what a character. Come all the way from Japan, his interviews well, they're not to be missed. Yeah, a very likeable character. And a funny, funny guy. Second right. We're better come to break. Made Maybe famous from his right famous right. apple pen. From the World Masters. Let's have a look at Roberto's break. Quite an unusual break style. Watch his back arm, it comes back and then starts to go towards the sky. Watch his elbow. Yeah, he just had a nice little nudge there as well from the six in the four ball just to open it up so he can play a one three combo. At first glance, the one looks like it could be going towards the two ball, so he needs to be a little bit careful here. He couldn't end up playing two combination shots in a row here. That's a lovely shot there from Superman, controlling the one ball to stay over the side. Yeah, really nice shot there. Controlled the object ball really well. Could have gone wrong quite easy. Now he's in prime position to take a 2-0 lead over Albin Alshan. Albin's been, been very impressive today. Just a couple of stop shots from Gomez and it'll be another rack on the board. Been very impressive today with Roberto. Obviously it's his first day. Not really got much experience in the uh, matchroom events, so he's handling himself well. Yeah, and if anybody deserves to win a qualifying spot to Monday's grand final, then... You've got to really say Albin deserves a chance. He's been in so many semi-finals and finals. It just hasn't gone his way when he really needed it. And as Roberto just over it, this shot, just okay. Thought he was going to slide past the eight ball, but a simple eight. The position onto the nine to take the two nil lead. Pool fans, if you want to win some exciting prizes, get yourself to matchroompool.com. There is a raffle going on for the Jeanette Lee Legacy Fund. Prizes are right. Moscone Cup VIP experience. That's tickets and a chance to play against one of your favourite players. You can win a Predator P3 Revo Q. Balls used in this year's final. I'm sure we'll get a few signatures on there for you as well. Zoom coaching with Alex Laley or Jeremy Jones, both captains of last year's Moscone Cup. Kamui Chalk and tip set. And a cue signed by all the group winners from this week, so Chris Mellon's name will be on that cue. 
also a US Open season ticket. If you want a chance to win some of them prizes, head over there, matchroompool.com, buy your tickets. Good luck. There's Albin Ocean, day five, still grinding it out. Would be kind of funny if he was here till Sunday and he had to play his sister. Yeah, it'd be nice if he got to play his sister, you know, probably the first time in a matchroom event that that's happened. But one thing for sure, his mind is on just qualifying Third for the top four. I think he's guaranteed at the minute. By two but he's got to win another two matches in the semi-final and final to get to the final day. Nayuki is currently breaking on table two. He leads that match four racks to two, of course. It's a big match for Nayuki. He's won two matches, so he's not in a bad position, but it's still very tight at the bottom of the table. Yeah, and Albin's been a bit unfortunate there. Stuck behind the six ball. And once again, no real easy push-out shot. He'll be happy with his day's play so far with Albin. Push-out called. Trying to keep his energy levels up. Well, he could have done with that cue ball being tight on the rail there. Cos Roberto is nailed on to take this. I'll be very shocked if he gives Alvin this shot back. Kind of got a two-way shot. He could possibly pot the one and the eight in the same shot. I think he'll go close if he rolls it. I think if he hits it with a lot of pace, he'll miss the eight completely. And the problem with that is, if he does miss the 8 completely, he's going to hit the 9, I would think. Hold on to your hats. What a fluke. What a fluke. And not only has he got a fluke, he's got a chance to pot the 1. An automatic position to get on the 2. He missed that by a country mile. Didn't even threaten the pocket. And what a massive roll that is. This needs a little bit of focus though. He can easily be missed. And missed it, he has. So Albin is back at the table. I think he's got a combo and I think he can just get through to... Pot the pink over the corner. So didn't capitalise on the fluke. Nuki always got two balls left on table two, so it looks like he's going to win that match. And Nuki's going well. Played very well yesterday. Question, please. And he will stay on that table. He'll play Matt Bith de Bosch next. And once again, Albin's face with a combination shot. He's got to be careful, he's got to roll this. And he's, well, he's played it at pace and I can't believe he's played it so hard. He needed to play that slow and he's, he's, he's got a shot. He can cut this one ball in. If he played it slow, he could have held the cue ball and the one would have stayed over the pocket. To me, that shows that he's not confident in rolling them kind of shots. Or is he just practising that shot because he's not very good at it? He's in the semi-finals, so he's got time to practise. Well, he's played a good recovery shot. But 
We all know what these Filipinos can do with the kick shots. And he has been getting a little bit of form, so I wouldn't be surprised if he made this. It's not a mile away, but he stuck it up. Yeah, you're not always going to fluke the ball. It pays to hit, but, you know, sometimes you get away with it, sometimes you don't. So Albion Ocean has got a tricky little shot here to get on the two ball. And it will be his first rack of this match. And he's overrun it. He's overrun it by some distance. And it could be a straight scratch into the corner and the side. Should he pop the two ball. May need to elevate the cue a little just to avoid the scratch. Which he's doing. And this makes the shot a little bit harder. And Albin has had a big roll. Bangs the cue on the floor. Frustration set in. One of your shots there, Carl, where he gets away with it and snooker the opponent. Yeah, I've been known. Good kick shot. Needs it to slow down. As long as it lands on the rail, it won't be too bad. Well, this is a thin one. Or he can bank it down into the corner where the cue ball is. I think you've got to chop this in. Natural position will come down for the three. Only thing he needs to be f careful about is the side pocket. Well, he's forgot to pot the ball. And has he got away with this one? I don't think he has. No, Alvin he's left the, the two ball. And that will frustrate yeah. Alvin Houshen. He's just had a little complaint there to the ref. That Alvin banging his cue. Seems to be the story of the week, though, where... The players who have qualified for the semi-finals, you know, they, they kind of just take the foot off the gas a little bit. They know job's done and there's no real heat on the match. Yeah, it's probably a case of uh, fatigue for Albin. You know, when you look at how many racks he's actually played since he got here, and that in including the practice games, what he's played, you're probably talking, I would think, in excess of 250 racks over the past five days. Table two, the next match on that table is Nokiori against Mark Bistabos. That is Mark's last match and he's on one win, so that is a big game for Mark over there. And this nine ball for Roberto to take a 3 0 lead going into the break. And there it is. It feels a little bit flat this match. Both guys have made it through to the semi finals. We will see you soon. There's no timeout, but there's a little break. Commercial. Guaranteed that shot will appear on plenty of highlight reels. Whoa, did he split the wicket? What a beautiful shot that was. 
What a beautiful execution. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Sometimes it's best if you get up to the table. Mm. This championship is being played with the new RMS tournament set. Featuring a unique molecular structure, it guarantees razor-sharp precision and unsurpassed longevity. Unquestionably the best pool balls in the world, this set is available in a TV and a value pack version, as well as in the new My RMS range of ball and Q cases. Now you can bring and play with the best ball set everywhere you go. My RMS, bringing new dimensions to your billiards experience. Day five, group five. Albin Ocean is still here, still fighting. He's playing Philippines. Roberto both Gomez. They both won four, four out of four, so they are both in the semi final. So it's a good day for Albin. Superman will get this rack underway. So he lost the cue ball a little bit and he got kicked up table. I'm not sure he can see the potting angle of the one, so we could see a push out. Maybe he can see the one, Carl. He's going to try and draw the cue ball up the table. And that's a good shot there to get to the two ball. Not totally convinced he played to get it there that way. But he'll take it. Yeah, it's a good chance now. Key shot that was to get on the blue too. Albin Ocean, former world nine ball champion. I wonder what he's feeling now. Of course, he's through to the semi finals, but he's had a bumper week so far. He's lost in two finals. He played Ralph Suke on day two. And whoever lost that match was sent home and he managed to win. And that's not Roberto's best shot. Not not tough to pot the ball. We could have done with getting the cue ball right away from the bottom rail and side rail. So he's going to play this with a touch of power. Well, he's digging down on it. I think the order of the day is that's to good. spin it in with the touch of right hand side. He's playing an exhibition shot, Chris. Lead the man alone. He's through to the semis. 
Well, I know he's called Superman Carl. And he's starting to fly. Wow. Filipino pool players, some of the best pool players in the world, some of the greatest players we've ever seen have come from over there, produced a lot of world champions. There it is. Roberto Gomez takes a 4 0 lead over an Albin Alction in a race to five. And going back to the world champions from the Philippines, Carl, I can think of around four from the top of my head Efren, Bustamante, Carlo Biado, and Ronnie Alcano. Has Dennis Alcolo won a world title? He won the world eight ball. I think he beat uh, Niels Fyan in the final. Alcano won the world eight ball. Yeah, they have produced some of the greats. Efren Reyes. Probably been the most famous they have produced. Yeah, and Efren over in the Philippines, he's five, uh, break, he's unbelievable how famous that guy is. Every single person in the Philippines knows him. Well, Alvin's at another good break. Once again, they've not come out great for him. It's amazing how you can break and one day they come out sitting ducks and the next day you just can't get a clear shot. Right, Mr. Bosch on table two takes a two rack to no lead, so it's an important match for him there because he's won one match out of five, so that is his last match and he's, well, he's kind of at the bottom of the table only three players have won one match down there Christina to catch is at the bottom she's played five one one Billy Thorpe played four he's also won one and then obviously Mark so if he can win that match he is safe because Christina to catch and Billy Thorpe play last Billy's got two Match is left. Yeah. He's on this table, so he's still in the hunt. But the two guys here on table one are through to the semi finals. And this is, well, it's a glorious chance for Alvin to get his first rack of this match. Yeah, he's not got much to do here, Carl. Just got to spin this down the table for the nine ball to get his first rack on the board. And there he is, first rack on the board for Albin. Albin Ocean and his partner Mario Hiko, World Cup of Pool Champions. That event is back. It's in May and it will be the 9th through to the 14th. Kelly Fisher and Alison Fisher will be playing in that event. They're representing Great Britain. They will be the B team. The great Alison Fisher, Chris. She'll be back on the screens. Yeah, I first met Alison when I was about 14 years old as a young boy playing snooker. It was actually my first nine ball event 
at the Doncaster Dome. And she was there. Quite a few of the snooker players were there. I believe Peter Ebden was there also. But there isn't a tournament that Alison hasn't won. She completely dominated the game for probably 20 years. Yeah, I'm excited for that one. Hopefully I'm in the, the com box for that match when the two ladies get their first match underway in that event. That'll be exciting. Back to table one, Superman to break. Cue ball nearly gets kicked in. And I think the three ball has just moved enough out of the way. So he might have some form of a pocket to pop the two in. Well, he can... Can he make the two in the corner? I'm pretty sure he can. If he can't, he's a straight bank into the top pocket. But I'm sure it goes past the red three ball. Got nothing to do with the cue ball, really. Automatic position to get to the four. Well, what has he played there? Well, it must have been tight and he was worried about the cue ball, so he's just flicked the three on the way past. Alvin Ocean's back at the table. Don't really think... Does it really matter if you finish first, second, third or fourth? You finish fourth and you've made it through to the winner's group. Yeah, I wanted to finish fourth so I could draw Catchy in the semis. Oh, I'm sure Catchy's watching and that'll be uh, noted down in the lockbook. <laughs> <laughs> he knows I'm only joking. <laughs> no, no matter who you play in the semi-final and the final, they're all world-class players. And you've got to play well to win. And also get a little bit of luck. Alvin, look into the skies. Didn't play that good. Wanted to come back out for the three ball. I think it passes a four. It's a thin cut. But he's guaranteed to be positioned on the four. Well, he is if he doesn't scratch. I mean, that is just unforgivable. I think he just wants to get out of there and concentrate on his semi-final. He won't be bothered who he's playing. No, he will have one more match left after this. It'll be on table two. He is the last match on table two tonight, and it's against Naoki Oi. Now, Yuki always on a little bit of a battle of his own. He's played four, one, three. Roberto's not played the greatest shot he's ever played there, so he needs to come up and down. Needs this to bounce. So he's making this a little bit harder than it should have been. Yeah. I he may choose to just draw this into the nine ball. It can't really go wrong as long as he connects with the nine. Well, he's gone twice across. And this nine ball for a 5-1 victory over Albin Alshin. My lord. Well, I was just about to... Can you believe? No, I'm in shock. Yeah, yeah, I am in shock. I mean, well, we all know what's happened there. He should have played it into rail. He didn't play into rail. This match... Well, it's still alive. That is incredible from Roberto. 
Well, he does pop some amazing shots. And as we've seen, he's missed some real humdingers. I think he needs to go find a telephone box. Those old Superman. <laughs> Yeah, that was incredible miss, to be fair. It's not often you see them type of shots missed on a pool table. Maybe he's just trying to frustrate Alvin a little more. Well, Alvin wants to get out of there. Yeah, it's a good point. Maybe it's a little bit of a tactical move from Gomez. Well, Roberto will be on this table after this match. He'll stay here and he will be playing Billy Thorpe. Billy Thorpe's played 4-1-1 one, one, and he will play his last two matches on the main table, Billy, so interesting stuff the way this is going to finish off in the group. Mark Bias the Bosch is 2-1 up on New York a big game for him. Said this before, he's played 5-1-1. One, one. Yeah, what I've noticed we uh, Mark is that he pots some amazing shots and can spin that cue ball everywhere and then all of a sudden he'll just like fire a, a stupid shot in and miss a ball by a country mile. He does like to hit the ball. I was speaking to, to Niels earlier and he was saying he hits the ball so hard for no apparent reason. He potted a nine ball in one of his earlier matches and I thought he was going to take the back of the pocket out. And he looks like he's going to take a 3-1 lead over Japan's Naoki Oi. Back to the main table. Number seven, that motion to break, trailing by four extra two. Albin Ocean will get this seventh rack underway. He's leading, he's trailing, sorry. Four racks to two. Roberto just missed, well, what's probably the easiest ball of the event so far. He has qualified, so it's not a big deal. And Albin's got a shot here. So he lost the cue ball a little bit there. And he was, oh, he's still, I think this is just, just the way he, he, he sort of behaves, really. I think he just wears his heart on his sleeve. And nice guy. So if anyone's watching for the first time and you're not familiar with Albin, he's a really nice kid. And this is day five. And he's been here from day one. He's played a lot of pool. I think it's important that he tries and wins tonight. If he gets his opportunity, he wins because he's going to need a little bit of time off before the final group. And I tell you what, that's unfortunate. How on earth has he screwed into the corner pocket from that thin cut? That's unbelievable. Start the clock. Yeah, you had to play that with loads of check side, as we call it here in the UK, and unfortunately it's a scratch. This match has been a bit of an anti-climax, to be honest. It's kind of, it's like a meaningless match, isn't it, Chris? It doesn't, you know, it doesn't get the juices flowing. Yeah, I'll, uh, from first glance, Albin looks like he just wants to get out of there. He knows he's through with the semis. 
and that's all he's interested in. But he may have to wait a little bit longer because that is another real slack shot from Roberto. Had the old top of the table to play in and he's left it short. I still expect him to make it. He's going to have to go twice across with the cue ball. And this is going to bounce a little bit too far. Is he going to be bridging? Well, he's just OK. He's going to draw back for the nine in the bottom right-hand corner. And he needs to make sure he gets this because Albin... Albin wasn't far behind, but it's over. Absolutely perfect on the nine ball. Yeah, that was a nice shot, that. Perfect on this nine ball. And it's over. Roberto Gomez wins this match over Albin Ocean 5-2. He will stay on table one. He is playing USA's Billy Thorpe.